Just recently, I've been scrolling through my LinkedIn feed and realized that Jared Dwyer, the former Waymo CFO, is taking the VP of Business Finance position at Rivian. The timing is absolutely perfect. Rivian's plans to go public this year, and there are predictions that Rivian's valuation will be somewhere between 50 and 70 billion dollars. Exciting times. But that's not exactly the reason I've decided to put together this episode. I was extremely excited to discover bi-directional charging functionality on F-150 EV, and while I was looking at competition, I realized that I've never ever covered Rivian on my YouTube channel. Let me fix this and focus specifically on Rivian's charging strategy. Stay tuned. Bakunin Live. I'm Michael Bakunin, and if you're new to my channel, after joining the EV energy management company Nuvi earlier this year, I tend to focus more on the charging aspect of EV ownership. I used to own various versions of Nissan Leaf in the past, and currently we have a Model Y 7-seater for a family of five. Charging has always been a strong barrier for EV adoption in the past, but these days car makers are becoming more and more creative. Ford's vehicle to home system being an excellent example. I finished working on the episode on Ford and thought, hold on for a second. The EV truck segment doesn't exist yet in reality, but who should we expect soon? Obviously, it's Cybertruck and Rivian. How is the ownership experience going to be different? But before I dive into this, please do me a favor, subscribe to my YouTube channel to help me grow my video podcast. Rivian's website is offering us free charging options, adventure networks, waypoints, and at-home charging. I will compare the first two with Tesla and the third one with Ford, because Ford basically created a new benchmark in the industry for home charging. Rivian Adventure Network is an attempt to copy Tesla's supercharging network. And I will tell you upfront that I am very disappointed by the fact that both Rivian and Tesla are not using the same EV charging standard and making their network exclusively available for their customers only. Aren't we entering the sharing economy? Aren't they duplicating efforts and resources? Are those the smartest strategies for humanity? I guess I don't need to answer those questions, but just for the sake of clarity, Tesla has created an excellent, very efficient and wide network of superchargers globally, which naturally became a barrier of entry for other car makers. As of today, Tesla offers 25,000 superchargers worldwide. When I was looking for an EV with an ability to travel, I practically didn't have any choice. No other OEM can compete against Tesla today from that point of view, and that's probably why Rivian decided to make it a very aggressive move and create a competing network of charges, which they call Adventure Network, which will be available to Rivian drivers only. I have no choice but to compare those two networks and try to see if the plans announced by Rivian are realistic. As you can see, I've done some number crunching here. Tesla closed Q1 21 with 2.7k stations and 24.5k connectors worldwide. Each station on average will be able to charge 9 EVs. Max power 250 kilowatts. Superchargers can add up to 200 miles of range in 15 minutes. And here is what Rivian is promising. 600 stations and 3.5 thousand connectors by the end of 23. Roughly 6 charges per station. 600 stations looks pretty aggressive compared to Tesla. It took Tesla many years to achieve that annual growth rate. I am not saying it's impossible, but definitely very challenging for Rivian. Out of 2.7k Tesla stations, 1.1 are in North America today. And I'd expect that the gap between Tesla and Rivian will either remain the same or even grow by the end of 2023. In terms of charging speed, Tesla has an advantage. Rivian's max charging speed is 200 kilowatts, which adds 140 miles of range in 20 minutes. Not exactly matching Tesla's spec, but Tesla doesn't have those fancy 250 kilowatt charges everywhere. 
In my neighborhood in Silicon Valley, I was only able to reach 75 kilowatts, while Rivian will start from scratch and ultimately may be able to offer higher charging speed on average across the entire American adventure network. Rivian also has an eventual target of 300 plus kilowatts. Therefore, the charging speed gap is not something we'd need to be discussing here really. One feature which is common for both systems is the plug and charge functionality. I said many times and happy to repeat, this is the way to go. Rivian will be also compatible with CCS network such as Electrify American. The Rivian website nicely says that you will be able, quote, to conventionally use the Rivian app to authorize and initiate a charge. Doesn't really sound like plug and charge to me. Some homework to do to catch up with Ford and Porsche Taycan. Let's move on to the second charging option. It's called Rivian Waypoints. Basically, AC level two destination charges with 11.5 kilowatt charging speed. Rivian plans to install 10,000 of those by the end of 2023. Tesla has 4.5 thousand destination charges today. And to be honest with you, I'm struggling to understand why those are needed at all. You either charge charge at home or use superchargers when you travel. I've never seen those destination charges at the locations I wanted them to be. Maybe when the network reaches 10,000, it will be a different story, but I would rather focus on superchargers to make road trips more convenient. The Rivian wall charger will have the same 11.5 kilowatt speed as Rivian waypoints. Both can add 25 miles of range in an hour. And this is where I believe the solution on F-150 electric is much more advanced and attractive. As a reminder, F-150 extended range comes standard with the bi-directional 80 amp Ford Charge Station Pro, which allows it to charge at 19.2 kilowatt at home. Pro adds 30 miles per charging hour. It's a 20% charging speed gain compared to Rivian. Not bad at all, given we are expecting to have huge up to 180 kilowatt hour battery packs on both Rivian and Ford electric trucks. On top of that, the system on Ford Lightning is bi-directional. It will allow you to optimize your electricity bills and have some backup power in case of natural disasters such as one recently happened in Texas. My take, the charging strategy Rivian has chosen is very expensive and aggressive. It will require a lot of capital, which we hope is going to come later this year, but also the company would need to build efficient operations to be able to execute that strategy in addition to engineering and manufacturing electric vehicles from scratch. And Rivian has a lot to deliver. R1T, R1S, a delivery van for Amazon. They also plan to make their skateboard platform accessible to other businesses. The profitability doesn't come very soon for young car makers. Therefore, the stock market will be more focused on tracking deliverables, comparing what has been promised by the company and what's being achieved. Rivian has slightly postponed the start of deliveries of its R1C electric pickup from June to July 21. It's not a red flag yet, obviously, but being able to focus and say no to many great ideas is one of the characteristics of great startups. When I was working on this episode, I found this aggressive statement on the web, quote, a non-existing charging network for vehicles that don't exist yet that's incompatible with other makes. As a huge electric vehicles fan, I actually want Rivian to start delivering on their promises as soon as possible. A few friends of mine placed pre-orders and are waiting for their EVs to come. Counting weeks now. All the best, the Rivian team.